chapter three review for the first ones, um, for number one through four, I stated that we just wanted to look and see how many solutions. It says graph the linear system and tell how many solutions that, that it has. I would like for you to just look. I said you don't have to graph it. What we're wanting to do is just be able to look at the actual equations that they have given us and decide what type of solution it has. So for the first one, we are given two linear equations, okay? So to be able to know what they are and whether or not they have a solution, we only need to know the slope, correct? Because we know that if it has one solution, it means that somehow they have two different slopes and they're going to cross at some point. If it has no solution, that means they're going to have the same slope because they are parallel lines. And if it has infinitely many, then they're going to be the exact same line, which would mean they would have the exact same slope, the exact same intercept, the exact same equation for the line. So that's what we're looking at on these first ones. So here we need to put our equations into y equals mx plus b to be able to look at the slope, or we can also use the shortcut where slope is negative x over, well, I say that it's negative the coefficient of x, which we call a, over um, the coefficient of y, which would be b. So we'll see how that, that plays out. So in this one, let me move this over. So in the first one, we have y is equal to negative x minus two. I've just got y by itself, so I moved x over. In this other one, we've got a little bit more to work on. I'm gonna move my three x over. So initially I'm gonna have four y is equal to three x plus 36. I divide by four, both sides by four. So I have y equals three fourths x plus nine. So this is all we need to know. For the first one, our coefficient is negative one. For the second one, our coefficient is three fourths. They have different slopes. So these are two different lines with two different slopes. They will eventually cross somewhere, so it will have one solution. That is all you need to do for that one. They say um, we can also estimate it by graphing. If we were to actually graph this, this would be a negative line, negative slope, starting at negative two, negative 45 degree angle, since it's a one. Here we're looking at nine. We'd be up here and we'd be going three-fourths up three over four, so it's kind of shallow. And if you graphed it really appropriately, you would see that it's close to negative four, six on that, right? But I was just wanting you to be able to look at the slopes and be able to tell what, um, how many solutions it has. So let's look at number two. Number two says x minus five y equals 10. And we also have negative two x plus 10 y equals negative 20. So again, we want to get y by itself. So we have negative five y equals negative x plus 10. We're gonna divide both sides by negative five and we have um, negative two. There we go. 1 fifth x minus 2. On this one, same thing, we want to get y by itself. So we're going to have 10y equals 2x minus 20. Divide by 10, divide by 10. y equals x over 5. And then negative 20 divided by 10 is negative 2. So we ended up with the exact same equation. This is the same line. So it has infinitely many, infinitely many solutions to that one, all right? And then the last one was number four. Number four is already set up in y equals for you. So we've got y equals one third x and y equals one third x minus two. So the thing that we're gonna look at initially, I've got a slope of one third on the first one, a slope of one third on the second one. However, it has a different y-intercept. So we have 
lines with the exact same slope, but they are crossing our y-axis at different places. So these are parallel lines. And if it's parallel, we know that they will never meet, so it has no solution.